Hello again everyone, welcome again to Principles of Steel Design and for this video we would be discussing about plastic hinge, collapse mechanism and virtual work method. Okay, so to begin with, from the previous pre-recorded video about the analysis and design of flexure members, so if you haven't watched the video yet, the link is in the description below. Okay, so from the mentioned video, we have discussed there that in the design and the analysis of our flexure members in steel or of our beams, it is said there that elastic yielding is actually acceptable. So meaning if elastic yielding is to be acceptable, it means that plastic behavior is to be our acceptable limit. So let's consider this certain section right here. So let's suppose that this particular section right here is to be subjected with a bending moment. So let's say that that is to be M. And if we are to determine the stress of the fibers, that is to be M over S of X. So this would give you the stress of our critical fibers, which is which are the outermost or these ones right here. So the answer here would be equal to FB. And as you can see here, this is to be our bending stress. Okay, so if we are to increase this moment right here, this bending stress right here would further increase up until you reach your yield point. So in this case right here, elastic yielding is actually happening. So from that, it would be this point right here. So it would be this one. So once again, these two cases right here is in this case right here, which is the elastic case. Okay, so from that, if we are to increase our moment further, right after this uh, fibers right here yields, these fibers right here would be the ones that will yield next. So as you can see, if we would be um, increasing our moment further, these fibers right here would also yield. So if we would be increasing it further, this next fibers would yield. And if we would still be increasing it further, all of these fibers would yield. So may it be the compression or the tension part of your section. So everything would yield as you can see right here. So if this is to be the case, so by the way, these three cases right here is actually in these areas right here in our stress strain graph. So this is to be for D, E, and F. Okay, so considering this last figure right here, if every, I mean, if every fiber on your steel is to be yielding, this is what we would be calling our plastic failure or our plastic case. So if this is to be happening, our steel section, I mean our steel member would fail in this manner. This would be its failure. And this failure right here is what we would be calling our plastic hinge. So plastic hinge in civil engineering is used to describe the deflection of a section of a beam where plastic bending occurs. So what you are actually seeing right here is to be an example of our plastic bending. So this is to be its stress diagram wherein all of the uh, fibers of that point right there is actually yielding. So there. So for this one to happen, so once again, if you, if you can remember from our previous pre-recorded lecture that in order for the plastic hinges to form, your section must be compact. So from the previous video, once again, you have checked the compactness of the section and whatnot. And after that, you must check the presence of lateral torsional buckling. And in this case, there should be no lateral torsional buckling. So it must be uh, braced in a manner that no lateral torsional buckling would occur. So meaning that your unbraced length is to be less than your LP. So there, so this would be the conditions for your plastic hinge to occur. Okay, so once again, in this point right here or in our plastic hinge, so this would be the location where our plastic bending occurs. And for our plastic bending moment, so if you can remember that is to be MP. So our MP is actually equal to our F's of Y times our plastic section modulus Z's of X. 
So it would be that simple. And your z of x or your plastic section modulus is to be the area moment about your equal area axis or your plastic neutral axis. So in in the determination of your plastic section modulus, so you can also watch it in our previous pre-recorded video that is also in the description below. Okay, so let's go straight to collapse mechanism. So by definition, your collapse mechanism is actually the arrangement of your plastic hinges that permits your structure to collapse. So it would be that simple. So for example, that in this certain case right here, so if you would be applying a certain load right here, this is to be its plastic hinge. And if you are to draw it this way, so as you can see, this is to be a hinge and this is to be a roller. And if you can remember from your statics of rigid bodies, when you hear the word hinge, so this would be your supports or the or your resistance that um, that is not capable of resisting moments. So it does not have moments. Okay, so considering that, so if this is to be your plastic hinge right here, which is, well, this part right here, so just imagine that this point right here has no capacity to resist moment. So this certain structure would collapse. Because as you can see here, if this is to be your hinge, this is to be a real hinge. So a real hinge and a plastic hinge. So even though this one right here is a roller, this one right here would still be considered a real hinge in terms of our collapse mechanism because naming this as a real roller doesn't matter. So this is to be a real hinge because this point right here does not resist any moment. So once again, considering this um, setup right here, if the plastic hinge would occur here, it means that this particular member right here or this one member right here would collapse or would fall as you see in this drawing right here. But for example, that we would be having this certain setup right here wherein both of these ones right here, I mean both of our supports right here would be fixed supports. So if you would be applying a load P right here, its mode of failure would be in this manner. So here and here. Wherein this one right here is to be your plastic hinge. So plastic hinge. But take note on this, guys, that if this point right here would experience plastic hinge, would our structural member collapse? So not yet, because this support right here has the capacity to resist the moment right here. So it would be resisting this, and this one right here would be resisting this. So from that itself, this, um, this setup right here wouldn't collapse if your plastic hinge is just to be in this point right here. But let's say that in this point right here and in this point right here would also experience plastic hinges. So plastic hinge. And as you can see right now, the I mean both of these supports right here does not have any capacity any longer to support your um, structure by moment. So meaning this is to be your collapse mechanism. So once again, your collapse mechanism is to be the arrangement of your plastic hinges that would result or that would permit your structural member to collapse. So let's have a little take away from this guy. So as you can see here, we only need one plastic hinge for this, um, for this statically determinate structure to collapse. And in this case right here, we must have three plastic hinges to occur in order for this one to collapse. So from that, let's have, I mean, from that, our conclusion here is that for us to know the number of plastic hinges our structural member should have in order to, for it to collapse, it would be in this equation right here, which is n plus 1, where n is to be your degree of inde indeterminacy. So degree of indeterminacy plus one. So whatever the answer here is, that would give you the number of plastic hinges for your 
um, structural member to collapse. So in this case right here, since this um, since this setup right here is a statically determinate beam, so in a statically determinate beam, the degree of indeterminacy is actually equal to zero. So zero plus one is equal to one. Thus, we only need one plastic hinge for this one to collapse. Okay, so for this one right here, so if you would be solving the degree of indeterminacy of this particular beam right here, its degree of indeterminacy is actually equal to 2. So it is indeterminate up to the second degree. So if you would be adding 1 here, so this is to be equal to 3. And as you can see here, we have, I mean, we must have 3 plastic hinges for this particular member to collapse. So basically, that is collapse mechanism. So in this case right here, so as you can see here, this part right here is to be a fixed support. And this one right here is to be a roller support. So from that, our, our failure would be in this manner. So it would be this one right here and this one right here. So once again, this point right here is to be a plastic hinge. And this point right here is also a plastic hinge, so plastic. But what about for this point right here? And as you can see once again that this point right here cannot resist any moment from the get-go or from the start, this is what you would be calling a real hinge. So there, and in this case right here, we only need a total of two plastic hinges for this certain structural member to collapse. So there. Okay, so for virtual work method, so virtual work method is one method in plastic analysis to check the plastic moment capacity of a certain structure considering its collapse mechanism. And if you can remember from your theory of structures, virtual work method, I mean the fundamental concept of your virtual work method is that the external work done of a certain object, I mean in a certain object, should always be equal to the internal work done. So this is to be its basic fundamental. So external work done should be equal to the internal work done. And in this case right here for our collapse mechanism, in this case right here, our external work done about this point right here is to be the value for our P times the deflection. And let's say that in this case right here, so let's say that this is to be your original um, beam and this is to be its deflection. And let's say that this deflection right here is to be delta. So meaning our external work is to be P times delta. So that is to be in this case right here. But what about for our internal work done? In plastic analysis, the internal work done in this point right here is to be plastic moment times theta, where theta is to be the summation of all our plastic hinges. So take note, plastic hinges. So I would just be writing it here. So MP, so theta. So in this case right here, what would be the theta of our plastic hinge? So, if this is to be theta, so let's say that this is to be theta, and this is to be theta. So, by simple trigonometry, if, the, if those two angles right there are theta, so this is also to be 2 theta. So, this is just basic trigonometry. So, what are your plastic hinges here? So, it would just be this point right here. And it's theta, I mean, the angle of your plastic hinge there is to be 2 theta. So, in this case, our answer here would be, I mean, our basic equation for this particular setup right here is to be P delta is equal to MP2 theta. So it would be as simple as that. But for pretend that this one right here is to be a fixed support. So let's say that that is to be a fixed support. So meaning this would be a plastic hinge. So pH and this would also be a plastic hinge. So meaning our theta right here wouldn't be 2 theta. Instead it would be theta plus theta plus 2 theta. So that would be 4 theta. That's if only if this one right here is to be 
uh, fixed support. But once again, this one right here, I mean the supports right here are not uh, fixed support, rather they are real hinges. So we wouldn't be considering this thetas right here. Okay, so we already have our MP, our 2 theta, our delta. Take note guys that in this certain um, setup right here, which is well, this setup right here, if plastic hinge occurs at this point right here, of course, this beam would deflect. Up, I mean, let's say at like this. And if this is to be the case, this angle right here, which is this blue line right here, so this angle right here, and also this angle right here are actually very small that a naked eye couldn't see them. And if those angles right here would be small enough, in this, I mean, in your virtual work method, we would be making use of our small angle theory. And from our small angle theory, it states that the sine of a very small angle, so sine of a very small angle is also equal to the tangent of a very small angle and it is also equal to the angle itself in radians so this is to be in small angle theory and just to prove this theory looking at the calculator to your left so let's say that we would be having an angle of 0. 0.0001 so let's get the tangent of that so tangent 0. 0.0001 so equal sign and as you can see here that is equal to 1.7453 times 10 raised to negative 6 and if we would be getting its sign so let's say sign so equal sign so it it is basically the same so it's the sign of that small angle is also equal to the tangent of that small angle and also from the small angle theory it is also equal to its value in region so if you would be um Converting this to regions, that is to be times pi divided by 180. So we are just converting this angle right here into regions. So equal sign, that is also the same answer as a while ago. So if you would be looking at these three, they are basically the same. So what would be the use of this theorem right here? So, so okay, considering that theory... So we can now solve for the angle of our, I mean, for this uh, value for our delta. So once again, tangent theta is equal to sine theta is equal to theta in radians. Okay, so considering this one right here, so from tangent theta, so considering Sokatoa, so tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent and in this case right here if this is to be your angle theta so if this is to be your angle theta but by the way i would just be i would just clear this up first and i would be increasing the size of this for us to have a greater drawing area okay so there so let's say once again that this is to be your line and this is to be your value of your delta if the whole of this is to be your length so let's say that this is to be your length we can say that this part right here is l over 2 and this one right here is also l over 2 and from this if this if this one right here is to be your angle so as you can see here, if this is to be your angle, this side right here is to be the opposite side. And this one right here is to be your adjacent side. So this is to be equal to, so what would be the opposite? So that would be your value for delta. So delta divided by what would be your adjacent side? That would be L over 2. So L over 2. So I would just clear this up for us to have space. So considering this one right here, so we now have a equation of tangent theta is equal to delta over L over 2. So there. But take note guys that from our small angle theory, sine theta is equal to tangent theta is equal to theta in radians. So that is to be theta. So theta. And if we would be um, getting this equation right here and substitute it here, so instead of tangent theta, this is to be theta is equal to 
delta over L over 2. So, solving for the value of our delta, so cross-multiplying, our delta is now equal to L over 2 times theta. So, this is to be for the value for this one right here. So, if I would be replacing this value right here by L over 2 times theta, so we can now solve for our value for our external work. So, from that, our external work done or our EWD. So, once again, we would be using this equation right here. So, I would just be copying it here. So, for our P times delta, that is to be P times L over 2 times theta is equal to our MP or our plastic moment times what would be the angle for our plastic hinge. So, once again, our plastic hinge is to be this one right here. So, meaning our theta is to be 2 theta only. So, 2 theta. So, using this equation right here for this certain septa right here, you can you can now solve for your P if your MP is given or you can solve for your MP if your P is given. So, this is just basically the um, derivation. I mean, this is just basically the concept for our virtual work method. So, let's just have an example instead. Okay, so in this illustrative example right here, we are to determine the plastic moment MP. And for us to determine that, we would be making use the virtual work method. And for us to use the virtual work method, we would be drawing our collapse mechanism. So in our collapse mechanism, once again, we would be drawing our plastic hinges. But take note guys that for your plastic hinges, they would be developed at the maximum bending moment. Okay, so from that, we would be drawing the collapse mechanism of this particular setup right here. So I would just be drawing it with our green line right here. So it would be like this. And since I know that the maximum uh, moment would be along this, I mean, on this point right here, this is to be its case. So I would just be copying this one right here to the bottom. So there, and as you can see here, this one right here is fixed and this one right here is fixed. So meaning that in this point right here, so this point right here, this point right here, this point right here are all plastic hinges. So plastic hinge, plastic hinge, and plastic hinge. So we don't have the presence of our real hinges here. Okay, so from that I would be drawing this one, this one once again. So th this is to be its original geometry. And from that, this is to be for your angle theta, and this is to be for your angle theta. So both of these would be the same since our plastic hinge would be located at this point right here. But if not, so let's say that your plastic hinge would be located here, you would be using ratio and proportion for you to determine theta. And once again, since this is to be our setup right here, we would be drawing a line here. And from basic trigonometry, this one right here is equal to 2 theta. So 2 theta, which is theta plus theta. Okay, so once again, for our virtual work method, our fundamental concept there is that our external work done is equal to our internal work done. And our external work done, that is to be for our P times this one right here, which is the deflection. And for our deflection, alpha so our alpha is equal to so that is to be theta l over 2 as for the derivation of this it would be as follows so it would be this one right here okay so there we have used our um, our small angle theory here since this is to be l over 2 this one right here is to be 5 meters so 5 meters 5 meters and from that this length right here is to be 10 meters so 10 meters or better yet let's just have this one instead so this alpha right here is to be 5 theta so that is to be theta l over 2 so there and so this is to be 5 theta and for the internal work done, so that would be the value for our MP, which is the unknown. So MP, plastic moment, 
times the summation of all the thetas of our plastic hinges. So that is to be theta, which is this one right here, theta plus theta, which is this one right here, plus 2 theta. So 2 theta. So emphasis, guys, that these summations right here are only for your plastic hinges. So if you would be having your real hinges here, you wouldn't be including them in this equation right here. Okay, so from that itself, we would now be solving for our value for our MP. So for our P, that is to be 20 kilonewtons times um, 5 meters times theta is equal to MP. So MP times um, 4 theta, which is the summation of this. So theta plus theta plus 2 theta, this is to be 4 theta. Now let's solve for MP. So dividing both sides by 4 theta to get rid of this 4 theta right here. So 4 theta. So our answer here would now become, so MP is equal to, so theta would just cancel out. And our MP right now would be equal to, so 20 times 5 divided by 4. So that is to be equal to 25 kilonewton meters. So it would be as simple as this. But take note on this, guys, that this value right here is only right if this value right here is to be a nominal stress or I mean a nominal load. So let's say that this is to be PN and you are not to consider ASD and LRFD. So if you would be considering this as piece of you, so for example that this one right here, this 20 kilonewton load right here is to be piece of you, then meaning what you have solved for here is to be M's of you. So thus, if you want to solve for the value of your m of n, so for your m's of u, which is this one right here, so m's of u, which is equal to 25 kilonewton meter, and this is to be equal to phi m n. So from that, since your phi is equal to 0 0.9, so m n, and this is to be 25 kilonewton meter. So for you to determine m's of n, just divide both sides by 0 0.9 to get the value of your mn. Okay, so for this next problem, we would be determining the uniformly distributed load w, which is this one right here. And as you can see, in this beam right here, it would be having the same length as with this other one right here. So meaning, this that I mean this delta right here, so this delta right here is also equal to, so delta is equal to 5 theta. Assuming that this one right here is to be theta, this one right here is also theta. Okay, but by the way guys, this is to be the case right here because that if this is to be your uniformly distributed load, if you would be drawing your shear moment diagram and it is indicated in your moment diagram that your maximum moment occurs at the mid span. So if this is to be your mid span, I mean mid span, this one right here is to be 5 meters and this one right here is also 5 meters. So it's just that I haven't drawn my... Uh, drawing accurately so it, I would just be redrawing it for it to show a rather more accurate work so it would be this one right here okay so this is to be your um, alpha okay so once again your internal work done is equal to your external work done so for your internal work done so once again that is to be for your MP so your plastic moment times theta and this theta right here would be all of the thetas of your plastic hinges so once again this plastic hinge would also be equal to 2 theta so thet theta plus theta plus 2 theta that is to be well theta plus 2 theta plus theta so that is to be 4 theta so this should be equal to the external work done so what would be new here so as you can see here this is to be a uniformly distributed load and for the work for your uniformly distributed load, so that is to be your WU, so which is the intensity of your uniformly distributed load, times 
this area right here so there and for you to get that area right there since that is to be a triangle and the area for a triangle is to be one half base times height so one half base so what would be its base so that is to be this whole one right here so one half base which is 10 meters times height and our height is to be this one right here I'm sorry this one right here and it is equal to 5 theta so 5 theta so once again this is 1 half base times height okay so solving for our WU so WU so that is to be equal to so our MP MP times 4 oops sorry times 4 theta divided by 1 half times 10 meters times 5 theta so solving for this one right here so i would be rewriting them here since we don't have any space and i would just be moving this so looking at the calculator to your left so that is to be 4 theta divided by 10 times 5 divided by 2 so the thetas would just cancel out and our answer here is to be equal to 0 0.16 so, 0, oops, sorry, WU is equal to 0 0.16 MP. So, this is to be the value for your WU, which is dependent upon your value for your MP. And once again, your MP is equal to F, Y, z's of x so if you have both of these values right here you can solve for your mp then substitute them here for you to get the, your accurate answer for your wu 